welcome back. Thank you for staying tuned. And I have Don Campbell, an account manager up here in Canada with an international or North American? Oh, we're international. I thought so. International company about online accessibility which is just extraordinary and she was talking to us about some of the pieces that are delighting customers and how it's much bigger than just someone with vision loss with an online screen reader and it's actually particularly important right now uh and and, and you know it was dawn that helped me realize tracy be ready so are there any tips or tricks or thoughts that you want to share to get our listeners, our employers, our businesses, and our users helping educate? What do we need? What's going on right now? So I think it's really important for people to kind of understand that in the world, we have accessibility legislation related to websites. Okay, primarily the World Wide Web Contortium and the Web Accessibility Content Guidelines, sometimes known as WCAG. These WCAG. are principles, okay, across the world that the world has adopted in different countries to make sure that the websites and the documents we're creating are fully accessible. Now, there's a whole lot of components to that. What's really important to know is that now, the United States has had laws for many, many years, the Accessibility, the Americans with Disabilities Act, which led to a Section 508, which has led to all kinds of work in different states around accessibility. Some of the most, um, some of the most, some of the states that are so far, that are really far ahead thinking about documents and website accessibility that comes to mind are Florida and California. Oh. Now, across the world, the European Union has some amazing legislation. In Canada, we're getting there. So in Canada, for over 15 years, we've had the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act, right? For a long time, it's applied to customer service, transportation, how you talk to people with disabilities that come in to your organization, and these, it has these different, different elements to it. Five standards, yeah. Right, those five standards. So what has just come into effect here in Ontario? Now, there's actually really been two big pieces of legislation that are really going to start having tremendous impact. One, yes, is the, in Ontario specifically, the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act. As of January 1st, if you ha are a public sector organization, so all of our local government, right, all of our universities and colleges here in Ontario, if you are a company that has more than 50 employees, more than 20 employees, you actually have to submit by June 30th of this month, you have to submit an accessibility <laughs> assessment as to how your organization's doing. If you're over 50 employees, a piece of that actually has to do with websites. And all websites in Ontario for over 50 employees, public sector, have to be WCAG, which is that Web Accessibility Content Guidelines um, 2.0 AA compliant. Now, a lot of people say, like, what is that? And I mean, we don't have nearly enough time, Tracy, to get into what all that means. <laughs> but it does mean you have to start thinking about the accessibility of your website. And if you look at a lot of our local governments, they've done a really good job. And again, colleges, universities, we're starting to really think about how easy it is to navigate a website. COVID has brought that on for a lot of companies, right? If it's not easy, nobody's going to stay there and buy, right? Yeah. If it takes you 16 clicks to check out somewhere, why do I want to be there, right? Yeah. People want to gravitate <laughs> to what's easy. Yeah. Now, website accessibility goes beyond that. There's two really big pieces in that. And that is, of course, what it looks like. So the color contrast that you're using on your website, the font size that you're using on your website, things like the visual look of it. But then there's also the non-visual look of it. And this is where I work with a lot, a lot of companies and governments right now around PDF. PDF mm -hmm. is sort of this world that is a love-hate for Dawn because I love it because it gives me a job, 
most of us on our team, we live this ironic sort of existence where if it wasn't around, that'd be okay too. Because the reality is, is most people don't realize, and hey, I was an accessibility champion advocate, you know, for like 20 years. And yeah. really, it's only been like the last five that I realized when I create a PDF document, if I don't create it with accessibility in mind, you hit save as PDF on any platform you've created that on, Microsoft Word doesn't matter, right? You hit save as PDF, it becomes one big image. Yeah. Right? So and it's how been a nightmare does... for me, like a uh, PDFs, like when I, without typing and wanting to copy paste, it's just an image. I can't copy the content that I need. That's right. And I mean, there's been a lot of reasons why people love the world of PDF. There's a lot of illusion still that it's very, very secure. Now, anybody can purchase Adobe Acrobat DC Pro license for, you know, a few hundred dollars a year and they can crack into any PDF and modify it. So kind of gone is that mentality from 20 years ago. And really, if you're making something accessible, one of the formats to avoid is PDF unless yeah. you know what you're doing, right? Yeah. And so the challenge right now here in Ontario and with a lot of our governments especially at the federal level too, is that we have archived hundreds and thousands of documents in PDF. And yeah. now companies are having to kind of clean house, figure out what's important, and then they have to send PDF out for remediation. And that's yeah. where our company can help. We have software and we have services that can help make sure and ensure your PDF documents are accessible. Thank goodness. The other, piece, the other piece of legislation I want to mention quick trace is just the Accessible Canada Act. Because as much as Ontario has been important, we all, you know, I'm sure you've talked about, I know you've talked about it with many guests before, is that Accessible Canada Act. Yep. Now, right? So again, this is federally, this is going to impact our banks. This is going to impact so many organizations, right? That again, receive and get federal money for federal funding and all of our federal departments are right across the country, right? Again, yeah. there is a strand within that that talks about information and communication. So if you don't know anything about document accessibility, you're doing yourself a disservice, yeah. right? Get ahead of the curve. I mean, you're ahead, well, but you're not ahead, right? Get ahead, be proactive because whether you think, whether you, if you know nothing about it at all, it's just a really good time to start asking questions because it is coming and it's, yes. and you want your products, you want your services, you want them to reach everyone. Everyone for accessibility and everyone to delight the future of customer service. And whether you're in Halton, Port Perry, like you or Toronto, like me or Ontario or Canada or international, Right. This is what's great about you can tap into Dawn to leverage these services and, and learn more about it because you want to be like YouTube where you blow up. And so this is the way to do it. Or if you're a customer that's having trouble ac accessing these services, you have a right now to demand those services, especially for those of our viewers that are in Halton, Kojiko. It is a right. By June 30th, those plans need to be in. And by January 1st, they were meant to be accommodated. And so yeah. what, what, wherever you are in the world, and especially for our local listeners, this is something that is fabulous for everyone everywhere included, with, whether you've had a head injury, whether you've got vision loss, whether you're like the majority of the population in the entire world actively aging, no longer is it people under 14, it's everybody's over 55, the majority of the population wherever you live in the entire world, not just here in Ontario, it is a service that your online people are going to need. And, yeah. and so it's exciting times. It is exciting times. And, you know, Tracy, I often think about, you know, like our Statistics Canada, right? Yeah. And all, we, uh, most of us just finished completing that a big census. Some of us got the long, some of us got the short. And I often think about, you know, how would funding change here in Canada and around, you know, throughout Canada, how would that change if every person who wore glasses like myself actually disclosed that they thought of themselves as having a vision disability? Yeah. Like, I wear glasses, like, right? This is, 
an expect like this is a device that that uses to help me see better right and it, i often think like can you imagine how many people right if we actually recorded that yes i'm a person with a disability because i wear glasses would that change the face of funding absolutely absolutely and how about the denial of glasses like me i definitely need glasses and there's so many things that i can't leverage now and online trying to see and what i look like after many many hours and so it's just it's it's and, and I have a physical disability, but I don't ever think of my vision loss. And you know what? My vision loss that I'm in denial about, and because of lockdown, haven't really done anything about, is much more impacting than having no hands. <laughs> like well, being I, online yeah, like long term that, all day, right? Yeah, and I'm in denial about it. You're doing online. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, all day I long. I so, hear you. It's pretty exciting. And, and I get, as you can see, like I get pretty fired up when I get yes! the opportunity to really help organizations sort of look at, okay, it's okay. It's okay if you've never heard of website accessibility. It's okay if you've never heard of document remediation, right? But like, just don't keep ignoring it. it you're not no. doing your company any favor. If you, and it's, you know, it is amazing how many like again, how generalized and how this conversation goes from one thing to another to another, right? Working with diversity and equity um, specialists and, and you know professionals around the globe. It's like you start with one conversation about website accessibility and then it leads to talking about documents and then it leads to talking about social media. And then you realize that it's not just the web design team that's in charge. It's no the graphic designers who are creating stuff. It's the marketing person who's posting on social media and doesn't realize that every time he or she posts a picture, there should Without be some alternative text yes. that goes along with that picture, right? And so it's, it really turns into a whole cultural change, which is pretty exciting. Dawn, thank you for joining Unstoppable You and the Today Show in the Halton region on your TV. So grateful to have you with me today, a lifelong friend and a lifelong advocate and a lifelong resource, first from the built environment and now with the web world and the PDF nightmares. So friends, please reach out to Dawn. I promise you, you'll probably laugh as well as get some business done because she's a great ally out there and fun to talk to. It, Dawn, how do people find you? Oh, well, I mean, my email is really simple. It's just Dawn, D-A-W-N, at onyx, O-N-I-X-N-E-T dot com, onyxnet.com. You can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, all of those, all of the social media. So, and of course, our website, equidox.co, E-Q-U-I-D-O-X dot C-O. <laughs> Equidox.co. And you can find Dawn through myself. I will definitely connect you if you have any trouble with any of those, but you'll see those on the screen for folks and in the notes on the YouTube channel when this goes live on TV. Thank Thanks you for the streamers watching us. Thank oh, you. Unstoppable. You're amazing. Thank you. Keep up the amazing work. Many positive thoughts your way. Thanks for watching listeners to Unstoppable You and Your TV with Don Campbell with Equidox.co and Unstoppable Tracy. Tune in next week for more.